seasoned amateur radio operators are likely familiar with the days of 1200 baud bulletin boards and AX25 TCP IP links. Today we have some amazing options such as the HSMM broadband hamnet and the Arden network, both of which use off-the-shelf hardware to build high-speed TCP IP networks in the microwave amateur radio spectrum. More recently, I picked up several of these new packet radio, or NPR70 modems, which give us the ability to run these TCP IP links up to 500 kilobits per second within the 70 centimeter amateur radio band. This gives us the flexibility of operating at a lower frequency while also greatly boosting the speed of a traditional amateur radio TCP IP link. Lately, I've been wondering what I could do with a link like this and a viewer posted an interesting idea. What if we hosted an Unreal 99 game over the 70 centimeter amateur radio band? So to give this a try, I set up two of the NPR70 modems, one set up as a master on my uh, Switch, and the other set up as a client, which is connecting to my Windows 10 laptop that you see here. So this is going to identify with a network that does not have internet connectivity, which is perfectly fine in our case. I'm going to open up our command prompt and just confirm that I am able to communicate via TCP IP over to a computer on the master side of our network. From here, we can go in and try a couple of games to see how well this actually works. Now that our TCP IP network is up and running, it was time to set up an Unreal Tournament 99 server. So I went ahead and had that configured for everything I wanted for this particular playthrough, and then went ahead and connected a, another client from the other end of the radio link. And you can see we're able to drop into a game. I actually get about a 120 uh, 112 millisecond ping, which is obviously not fantastic, but being that we're only running this at modulation 20, which gives us roughly 65 kilobits a uh, second to work with, this is running fairly well. And of course, you can see in the uh, SDR window in the upper left hand corner that the amount of data being transferred back and forth on this simplex frequency between the two NPR modems has gone up uh, substantially as it's communicating back and forth with the remote radio client and the server that also is hosting uh, the other player in this particular circumstance. Up next, I wanted to give this a try with one of my all-time favorite games, and that would be Unreal Tournament 2004. So in this scenario, we are set up on the laptop, which is running the client NPR70 modem, and I'm going to go to join game here, and we're just going to manually connect to the IP address of the server, which is residing on a separate computer that is uh, connected via the NPR70 master modem. So this com uh, communication between my laptop and the server is 100% going over the NPR70 Five modems on the 70 centimeter amateur radio network. I'm not sure if anyone's actually tried to play a game like this before over amateur radio, um, but we're giving it a try here and sure enough, this does work. Now, mind you, again, we are only using modulation 20 now. I'll put more information about the different modulation types in a future video, but essentially modulation 20 keeps these modems legal within the United States for me because it keeps it within the legal symbol rate that we uh, can use in the 70 centimeter band. However, you can most certainly set these to higher symbol rates or higher modulation rates in order to get yourself a much smoother gameplay experience. Now, in this case, I'm getting an average ping of about 225 milliseconds, which is well over 100 milliseconds higher than the ping time I was getting with Unreal 99, which makes a lot of sense seeing as Unreal 2004 is a newer game and it is going to take up quite a few more resources as uh, the internet has evolved over the years um, when these games came out. Now, while I thought it was really cool to play games like Unreal Tournament over this 70 centimeter amateur radio link, I also wanted to try something um, more like a strategy based game. So I wanted to take a look at something like OpenRA, which is an open source version of Westwood's Red Alert series. And uh, basically, because the events are not quite as real time, you're not tracking a player running all over the place. Um, you do have to track different assets, um, but the game is quite adept at running well over uh, low speed, high latency networks, and it does seem to excel quite well. We were actually able to get through an entire game without any noticeable lag to our connection, so it did seem to work pretty well. And this was again just using the slower modulation 20, which only gives us about 56 kilobits per second at its maximum. Um, so I would say for what it is, it's actually performing quite well uh, for a game like this. And I think it's actually well suited for a game uh, similar to this style. 
Surprisingly, it's actually not uncommon to see people play a game over the amateur radio spectrum. It's actually fairly common to do things like playing chess over 1200 baud AFSK uh, packet links. And I've seen other games uh, similar to this played on things, for example, like the HSMM broadband hamnet, as well as the Arden network, since those, of course, are TCP IP networks as well. The difference here being is that we are not forced to do so within the microwave radio bands. We're not forced to stick to that perfect line of sight to get our connectivity to function. We can actually operate at the lower frequencies, get ourselves um, in there on the 70 centimeter band, and it really gives us a lot of options that simply are not there in a microwave radio situation. So clearly playing video games over amateur radio is not the thing that you're typically going to be able to, or going to be doing. However, I thought it was an interesting way to demonstrate the capabilities of these particular modems, even when they're set at some of the lowest speed settings that they currently have available to them, and see that they are quite functional and quite usable. In future videos, I plan on showing you how to set these modems up, and we may also be taking a look at various software for sending files back and forth across these networks, as well as doing things such as TCP-based amateur television, two-way chat, and other things of that nature. Uh, these would be a great way to give yourself a slightly lower power, but perhaps a further reach um, access point into an existing um, broadband hamnet or an Arden network. So there's a lot of different possibilities here, but I wanted to present you what I had and give you an idea of what is possible and just really see if my um, audience is interested in uh, some more content like this. So I hope you all had fun with this. Um, like I said, if you would like to subscribe or become a patron, patrons are always going to get early access to all of my video content before it goes out. And uh, we are definitely going to be looking into doing more with the NPR 70 modems. Uh, here in the relatively near future. So if you're interested in any of that, please hit that subscribe button. Ready if you can afford to join Patreon, it is greatly appreciated. It is honestly uh, how I'm making my living at the moment. So um, every supporter absolutely helps. And uh, you know whether it's a dollar or something more, it definitely goes towards uh, keeping the spirits up and keeping the content flowing. So I thank you all for being here. Uh, thank you both to my uh, existing patrons and, of course, everyone who subscribes to the channel. And, uh, yeah, can't wait to see you all in the next one. Bye.